Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're talking about dead code. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Today's video is inspired by a question. So Sahil asks, if I include a file like iostream or standardio.h, will the preprocessor paste the contents of that file into my file? And wouldn't this just increase my executable size greatly since these included header files are hundreds of lines long? Or will it only paste the signatures of the functions that I'm using? So this question centers around the issue of dead code. That is code that is included in our programs, but it's never actually executed, it's never called, and so it doesn't really need to be there. And we wanna know if those unused include files with all their many, many lines of code are causing our executable binaries to blow up like Harry Potter's Aunt Marge, or if the compiler's smart enough to do something a little more efficient. Now, why do we care? The answer is often we don't. Memory's cheap and, you know, who cares about a few kilobytes here and there, except maybe we do because those kilobytes do add up, and especially for those embedded programmers out there who are working on microcontrollers that have only a few kilobytes of RAM, there a few kilobytes makes a big difference, and so you definitely care. So let's try it out. As always, source code is available through Patreon. Let's jump into the code. Okay, so here I have a simple program, a little variant of Hello World, with a function down below that I'm going to get to eventually, but just give me a minute. We also have a make file over here. There's nothing fancy here, but it does a few useful things. The first is that it uses the dash E option right here, this complete src.c or complete source.c. It's using this dash E option, which all this does is it runs the preprocessor, includes all the header files, and gives us the whole block of C code in all of its glory that we're going to compile. Now next, we have a plain target down here. This basically just compiles the program with standard options, nothing special there. And we're gonna to add to this later, but for now, this'll do. Okay, so back to the program, you're gonna notice a few things. Okay, the first one is in main, we have this loop. This, uh, basically, we're initializing this array. We also have an average function down here that's going to eventually compute the average of the values in that array, but it's currently not being called at all. So for now, it's dead code. Code that's in our program, but it's never going to be run. Okay, so for starters, Let's just go to the terminal and we're going to compile our code. Okay, so nothing fancy here. Um, so first let's take a look at this complete source.c file. Now you're gonna notice there is a lot here, a lot of extra code. So this is all coming from that standard io.h file that we included in our program. We were just looking for printf for a single function here. That's the only thing we want, really wanted, but you notice that we got a whole lot more. We got lines and lines of different stuff, some of which maybe we need, most of which we definitely don't. Okay, well, we're going to use this as our baseline. Now, let's look at our file size. If you come down here, you notice that, yeah, our file size is a bit bigger. We went from 365 bytes of code all the way up to 23,196 bytes of code. So that's a pretty significant increase. And notice that our binary is about, that's a little, it's about half that size. It's basically 12,700 bytes. And if we run it, you notice that it prints out Hello World just as expected. Okay, great. So one other thing that I wanna look at is I wanna look at this program using object dump. And this is basically going to let us look at the symbol table for our compiled binary. Now in here, you're going to notice a few things. First of all, you're going to notice main is in there. You're going to notice that average, that dead function that we never called is still being included as an object. Notice that it has an address. So at least some dead code is being included. Okay, so now let's play around with this a little bit. And what I wanna do is come up here and just include string.h. Now I'm not gonna call any of the functions in string.h. I'm just including it. So this is going to presumably add more dead code into the mix. Now let's compile it. And you'll notice if we look at the size that complete source.c got even bigger, right? It increased by another five to six kilobytes. And so it added a bunch of code, but you notice that the binary, the size of our, our compiled binary didn't change. It didn't actually get any bigger. So maybe our compiler is doing something smart after all. Now at this point, we've answered question number one. When you include a header that you don't actually use, it actually doesn't make your program blow up. It doesn't make things get huge, at least not using this compiler. Now, one reason for this though, is that the code for all of those functions in string.h, that code actually lives in libc, which is dynamically loaded at runtime. So the compiler might not be doing anything clever here at all because that code wouldn't be included in my executable even if I called it. 
The only thing that would be included would be the actual function calls themselves. But what about our average function? Let's look at that because this code right here is dead and I would rather not have it in my program, in the final program, if it's never going to be called. But there are some things that we can do to get our compiler to help us out a bit. And so for that, I'm just going to come in here and make a new target in my make file. Call it no dead code. It's also just going to depend on test.c. And it's very similar to my other, to my plain target, but we're just going to add a few options here. Now, the first one we're going to add is dash os. Now, what this is doing is basically giving a hint to the compiler saying that I want to compile my code for size. I want, you know, size is the thing that's really important to me. Now, this is, of course, a hint, which means that the compiler is free to ignore this hint. It's not a command, it's not a demand, it's just a hint. And so, because I'm not super confident that it's going to do what I want it to do, I am going to add a few other compiler options. So, specifically, I'm going to add an option to tell it to remove dead code from the data sections from the function sections of the code. And then we're going to uh, produce our binary. Let's add our source file here. And then I also need to add a flag for the linker telling it to strip out dead code. Okay, so now we have our new target. Now I can come down here and compile my code. Oops, I mistyped this option. That's supposed to be an underscore. Okay, so now if we take a look, you can see that yes, the no dead code option is smaller. Um, presumably that's because the dead code has been stripped out. Let's take a quick look with object dump. And you notice that that average function is no more. It's no longer included in this binary. So that's great, that's what we wanted. Okay, so now just to make sure that our compiler just happens to have a little rule in there that looks for unused functions called average, let's take a look and let's actually make it so this code is not dead anymore. So we'll jump up here and let's actually call our function here. Let's just print out the average of our, of our array. Okay, so now the code is not dead. Now we're actually using it. Okay, so now if we look at the sizes, you notice that it still did remove something, but it's bigger than it was. Now, if we look with object dump, now we're going to see that, well, that's strange. I expected actually to see average in there, but if we run no dead code, you notice that it still produces the average, it still prints it out. And so my guess here is that we're probably getting this function inlined in order to save space. Maybe let's come up here and take a look. What if we remove our hint here? I'm just curious and see what's going on. Okay, so now average was in. So it was that optimizing for size hint that actually told it, hey, there's something else you can do to actually even remove that function call altogether, which I'm assuming was an inline. Now, if we look at the size, now you notice that the binaries are exactly the same size. So that gives you a little bit of a sense what these different options are actually doing. These options that I've left in right now are stripping out dead code from the binary. And if we add dash OS, that's going to say, hey, try to make this thing as small as you can, which is often a nice thing, especially for you embedded developers that are trying to squeeze every last byte into this little tiny microcontroller that you're working with. So I hope this is useful. I hope you learned something new. Next time you're worried about dead code, now you know what to do about it. And you can stop worrying so much about what happens when I include all those big header files. Thanks for watching. Check out these videos if you want more low level C information. Like the video if you wanna help out. Subscribe to the channel if you don't wanna miss the next video. And until then, I'll see you later.